Hey guys, it's Matt here from the Bull Call, and quickly I wanted to go over CCIV again falling down another 5% today. Alright, well, let's quickly, before we start the video, I just please, if you could just take 10 seconds out of your day to go down below, click that subscribe button and the like button, that would be phenomenal for the channel. It is such a big help if you guys could do that. Um, so, yeah, let's get right into the charts. So let's pull up. Trading view as we always do, the four hour charts. We could see your CCIV. We are in a very crucial time, extremely crucial right now. So, what we did is we pumped, we obviously pumped, pumped, pumped. We started, create, we started to create this nice line. We need to see a bounce here. We're going to start this next candle. We need, need, need to bounce off this blue line. If we do not bounce off this blue line, we will definitely be seeing this other supply area. It was great that we actually did break this demand because we were down here. We were in. We actually broke the supply. We we just hit this this last bar. Started to rally into the demand area that now is 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 a support area. We broke out of that demand and, and became a support. Slow slow trickle upwards, and then you know a few. We, we actually were in the um, next supply area of $24, and we actually broke out looking at $27, $28 right here. And we actually were so close to seeing, you know, a $30. We could totally have seen this $30 push up here. But obviously, we saw some kind of rejection right here around $27. Uh, let's see. Is that even another? St eh, you could technically consider that another supply area. I don't. I don't really want to consider it, but um, technically, I guess it could have been enough another supply area. But there isn't enough. There isn't enough points for it to really be hitting. I guess it's right here. There's a little bit of points to be hitting it, but um, yeah, it, that's kind of a uh, another demand area that it just couldn't break. But that's fine. That's not what we're really here for. We are trying to see if CCIV can hold this long-term trend upwards into the upper 30s if even if we could just see some nice movement upwards that's totally fine so the just keep going up that's totally fine by me um, sure is it is it kind of annoying to see you know your favorite your favorite stock down 6.3 percent in a day totally of course I mean it is back and like I've said multiple times this is such a risky stock um, own it at your own risk because it could be it's it's one of those things that could it go to 100 yeah it went to 60 before I, I, I can see this going to 100 but just not yet we got to see those cars come out and we got to see how they do on the road and how people actually like them and how challenging apparently musk is like getting your cars on the road is the hardest part so these few three years for lucid is going to be cru crucial it's the hardest part, Musk says. It, it it takes so much to get your car to get your cars on the road. It takes so much, and like I feel like that's the hardest part about this. We are going to see a lot of turbulence. We're going to see a lot of problems. I wouldn't be shocked if we see in the news not yet, but when they start creating cars, they're going to have some kind of failure. They might have to recall cars. There's going to be problems. It's going to be problem, 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 and then the stock's going to get beaten down. That's one of that's it, it's good that you know we finally we might finally start getting these cars on the road and everything, but it's just going to cause a lot more turbulence in the stock price because right now we're just basing off of trading, not off news, right? Because I mean, what news catalyst really brought this up? I mean, I guess there was a few. There was like Apple. Okay, maybe maybe Apple, you know, can merge with Lucid, not merge, um, partner with Lucid and have some Apple features in the car, but. I mean, other than that, there really was nothing driving this move. It was just trading. It just obviously had a lot of bullish momentum. It broke out of the supply. It broke out of the demand area. Broke out of another demand area. But it just could not break this $28 level. And it suffered. It suffered uh, a lot. So, I mean, but like I've said multiple times, this is so crucial. We need to open tomorrow. Um, we need to open... Let's see. We need to we need to open around 
We definitely need to be above 22. 3. 22, 3 is somewhere where we need to be around. We need to be above that. We need to see a little bounce off this line, and we want to keep this trend upwards. That is so crucial right now if we keep this trend upwards. It's, it's beyond crucial right now if we can keep this trend upwards because it'll just be so helpful for the, um, you know, how, how, this, um, how this all plays out. I mean, we could take a look at the, um, the five-minute charts right here. So uh, here are the five-minute charts. Here's CCIV right in the middle here. We started, actually, we actually started not too bad today. Like, I, I was watching a pre-market. I'm like, okay, we're, we're dipping, we're dipping, we're okay, we're not bad. And then I didn't actually watch this, but we act I didn't see this. I was doing something at the time, and we actually sp spiked up at, the, at, at, at open, and then we just crashed at 2% right at, right at the first candle, which is actually very interesting. And that, that made so much, bull uh, so much bearish sentiment today that it just had to keep going and down and going and going and going. And, um, I mean, it's obviously not the end of the world. I mean, I'm still going to hold it through all this pain, and I, I, I don't see a reason to be selling right now, but you could. Obviously, take your profits when you want. There's no reason. To there's no there's no shame in taking profits, man. I mean, there's really no shame in taking profits, but I don't personally see profits being taken yet. Um, maybe if it, you know, may maybe if it goes to 50, I might start taking some profits. I don't, I'm, I'm not really sure yet. But like I've said multiple times, this is something I want to keep forever. I really don't want to. I don't really want to sell Lucid. I feel like it's a great company, and we really need to see how well they can do over the next few years. I'm not super heavy into it. I mean, it's one of my. I want to say major holdings, but it's one of my. It's like my second top holding, right? Right after uh, the S and P 500. So I mean, it's it's a big weight in my in my total portfolio on Adam Finance. You actually could see. I'll link that uh, video on the top right hand corner. You actually can watch that video and you could see how Adam breaks it down for you of all your accounts, which is actually really cool. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, it, this is really an interesting time for Lucid. We need to see some movement upwards. Um, we need to see bounce. We, 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 need, we need to see this bounce. We need to see, we need to make sure we need to keep a, a good eye open for a 25, about 25.3 tomorrow morning. And if it if it opens lower, you better believe yourself. You're gonna see this twenty dollar level again. Another another two dollars will get shaved off within the next three days, and then it'll be interesting because next week is not gonna be apparently fun because uh, going off uh, the trends of June, we are going to see a a nice correction in the S and P five hundred. We could see some potential downturns next week. Uh, I'm thinking about getting some um, UVXY calls um, just to say that the market might see some volatile volatility next week. But uh, that's for a separate video, a separate time. But just just keep that, putting that out there. Be very careful, especially if you're going to buy Lucid right now. The S&P 500 likes to normally go down in the last week of June. So I'm actually going to do some buying next week. Like I'm, I'm so hyped that I actually could finally start putting more money in my Roth. Like I'm actually stoked. I want to go put some more money in my Roth. I want to go buy something. I want to. I want to put more money towards my, you know, my older self. I, I want to keep putting my money. I want to keep putting my money in there. Right now, I just have it sitting because I just see the S and P 500 just skyrocketing. You know, off off the lows I bought it off of. I mean, it's not skyrocketing. I mean, you know, a good a good four percent is skyrocketing for the S and P 500. But you know, it hitting all times highs back to back days. You know. Just putting that there. Just, just be very careful in you know what you're doing with your money right now, right about now. Um, if you want to see what happens next week, if you're not in Lucid and you want to be in Lucid, I would definitely see. Obviously, keep this trend line. If it breaks down, you could see twenty dollars, and you can maybe buy back then, uh, buy back in here. If we see a break in this support level. Like I was saying in other videos, the this is one of my last areas I want to see lucid. If it breaks this seventeen dollar level and it really does not want to go back up, like if it, if it breaks it in this candle, like let's say this one closed down here, I would have I would have sold out of lucid, or CCIV because I feel like it was too risky at the time. Like Lordstown Motors, and all these other companies. Like let's look, let's look at Ride. I mean, like they they got destroyed from their from their highs. So like if you bought at ten, you were screwed because it went to six, 
So like, let's say you were like, all right, I don't want it to go past this level. You're like, oh, I don't want it to go past 10, 15. You're like, it's been a really good rock and it finally broke that level. Well, you know, it's going to just continue downwards. It's so bearish. Like this, this move right here is so bearish. It's insane. Such a bearish move. I mean, it's, it's crazy. And then you can finally see where it broke out. Actually that like, this is this, this is actually a perfect little move right there, but that's not what we're here to talk about, but you know. I just I want to I want to keep it positive. I want to see some more positive movement, but it's going to be very tough for next week. As long as we stay above this purple bar, I'm totally fine with that. But I really really want to see this blue line. If that if we could stay above this blue line, we could see some good movement for the next following weeks. After we uh, start rolling our cards, cars change the name to LCID. I mean it'll be it'll be good. It'll be good. Um, but yeah, that's that's it for today's video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, yeah, let's keep the CCIV train rolling. I mean, it's tough to see it drop. What are we at now? What have we dropped off now? We've dropped off, jeez, yeah, 15%, 16%. Eh, that's not always great, but it's okay. It's okay. We're still holding. Still holding the line here. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video, and peace out.